tonight on Golf Central World number one Dustin Johnson is looking to get back into the winner's circle after his best ever finish in the players and at 59 years young as Bernhard Langer found the fountain of youth we'll take a closer look at why he continues to dominate the senior circuit on the eve of its very first major of 2017. Plus, after 82 straight weeks, world number one is on the line this week for Lydia Ko. All the top stories in golf right now on Golf Central. Golf Central. Brought to you by Titleist. 30 teams are punching their tickets to the Division I Men's Golf National Championships today. We'll break down each region for you with scores, analysis, and predictions for the top teams and individuals to get you ready for championship week. How about this guy, Noda Begay III? He's no stranger to college golf. During his time at Stanford, he fired a 62 during the 1994 NCAA Championships. That round of 10 under is still the best score in relation to par. In the event's history, the Cardinal won the team championship that year, beating Justin Leonard's Texas Longhorns. Where are the where are the glasses, the sunglasses? He hasn't aged a bit. Lisa Cornwell, hey. MB3. I got uh, those glasses. They're they're in the locker room back back at home. Okay. Well, you should have brought them out for uh, for Golf Central tonight. Hello, great to have you guys with us. We have a lot going on. I, you have some great memories from college. Oh, I absolutely do, and I think that so many of these young men that have had the chance to qualify for the NCAA championships are are having a similar experience that that, that I had at Stanford to make some great friendships. To this day, Tiger Woods, Casey Martin. Conrad Ray, uh, many of these guys are still in the game playing um, or they're coaching right. and it's just a long, long time friendships that you make and just the memories. Life will never be like that again where you're traveling and going from event to event with the same, basically the same group of guys. You make great great friendships with your coaches and then you just carry those relationships forward. I'm sorry, Tiger who? <laughs> Tiger Woods, he won a few, he won a few tournaments. <laughs> yeah, both in college and on the professional ranks. Well, uh, oh, okay, so I thought that we were gonna go forward, but. Oh my gosh, I forgot to bring this up. I, I, <laughs> I was going to just go ahead to the PGA Tour. But... Do you recognize that song? <laughs> I recognize wow. those horrible shorts. <laughs> Lisa Cornwall, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> from her college days back at University of Arkansas, the Fighting Razorbacks. Yeah, I didn't shoot a 62, though. Well, I did before I played the last couple of holes. Can we go to the PGA Tour now? <laughs> we ready? I'm Let's ready. go. Please, Let's shifting keep, hour. Although I can say woo pig suey, because I'm always proud of my Razorbacks. Shifting hour focus, please, to the PGA Tour now. Here on. <laughs> You guys plan that top storylines heading into this week's stop in Texas, the AT&T Byron Nelson, Sergio Garcia. He's a two time winner of this event and the defending champion. He beat Brooks Kepka on the first playoff hole last year. Jordan Spieth, this will be his seventh appearance in this tournament. How about this? His best finish tied for 16th as a 16 year old amateur in 2010. That's no to be gay stuff and all the stars shining brightly in Dallas. That man right there, Dustin Johnson, four top tens in this event. Day won it. Jason Day for the first time, uh, for his very first PGA Tour win back in 2010. For more on Dustin Johnson, we take you live to Irving, Texas and say hello to George Savarikas. George, uh, DJ has played extremely well in this tournament inside, as we just mentioned, the top 10 four times in seven starts. What does he feel needs to happen for him this week to finally break through at TPC Las Colinas? Well, Lisa, it's been quite the run for Dustin Johnson since injuring his back at the Masters. He's now played three straight events on the PGA Tour. He said physically he feels great this week, and as far as his game, it's about as good as it's been in the last couple months. He did some prep work earlier in the week at the Florian with his coach, Claude Harmon. Likes where it's at. If you look at this past week at the players, you could go glass half full or half empty. Half full, he finished in a tie for 12th, his best career finish at TPC Sawgrass. On the other side, that tie for 12th, his worst finish on the PGA Tour, dating back to the end of January. So here's DJ's assessment of his week on the stadium course. For me, I felt like I, I played terrible. I mean, it was, you know, obviously I, I got it around, but, you know, the ball was not going where I was wanting it to. And, you know, I was just out there, you know, just grinding. It was, um, you know, it was tough for me last week. You've had a good run now as number one. What's it been like 
walking in those shoes, being uh, the guy with the bullseye? I like it. It's, uh, I mean, obviously it's why I play and why I practice and why I work so hard at, at the sport, um, you know, it's to be at the top. So, um, but, but finally getting there and, you know, being here for a while now, it, it's for me, it, you know, it, it drives me to, to work harder and, you know, to try to get better, you know, each and every day. So, um, you know, I, I enjoy being, you know, being here. It's been interesting to see the progression for Dustin Johnson. He never really outwardly said that becoming and retaining the number one ranking in the world was a goal of his, but now that he's there, he seems to be extremely comfortable. He's opened up a nearly five-point lead over Roy McIlroy, who's at number two in the world ranking. It's a 4.8 plus margin at the moment. So while he's only been there about three months, he clearly enjoys being at the top of the mountain, looking down at the rest of his peers, Lisa. He certainly does, George, and he never uh, seems to be under pressure. Thank you very much as we take a look at Dustin Johnson's first round grouping. These guys go off at 1.40 Eastern time off number one, playing alongside Louis Oosthuizen. It's going to be fun to watch him after his performance in the players and a guy who went to the University of Texas, Cody Gribble. We've already said hello to Noda. Welcome in, Matt Adams. Uh, guys, let's uh, let's talk about Dustin Johnson and just everything that awaits. I mean, here's a guy who has been so consistent on this golf course. You like his odds this week? I do, actually. He hasn't finished worse than tied for 20th since 2009 at this event. He owns the best scoring average to that run as well. 67.88 and a career scoring average there of 68.54. Note, so when we consider the fact that 11 of the last 17 winners have posted all four rounds in the 60s, obviously you have to start out well. And I loved it when he felt he finished 12th at the players and he felt like he played terrible. Well, yeah, well there's two things I really love about Dustin Johnson this week. Number one, in the last 10 years, no one shot more rounds of 67 or better than Dustin Johnson. And secondly, he's not balking at being number one. We've heard players talk about it, getting to number one, McElroy, Day, Spieth, and having mixed feelings about being there. Mm -hmm. But Dustin Johnson has just wholeheartedly embraced it. He likes it. He loves the challenge of, of maintaining it. And these guys are trying to knock him off that pedestal, but he's ready for the challenge. How much of that do you think is a reflection of just his character, his ability to just let things seemingly roll off his back? Well, I think Dustin is just is, is a remarkable athlete. And I think he brings that athletic mentality in terms of, hey, let's lace them up and let's go at it. Let's put the gloves on and let's see who's the last man standing after 12 rounds. And I think that that is what really embodies the way that he approaches the game. He lets a lot uh, run off his back. Uh, we saw that so remarkably at the U.S. Open. And I think that has become a huge asset for him. Another guy who has been remarkable and would really like to be remarkable this week is Jordan Spieth, who is making his seventh start in the Byron Nelson this week, looking uh, to top his best ever showing in this event when he finished in a tie for 16th in 2010. Again, as a 16 year old amateur, if it happens, it could be without a familiar club in his bag, though. George Savarikas rejoins us live uh, with all those details. Hard to believe he's letting the Scotty, that old Scotty, go for a bit, George. I know, Lisa, and it's great that you bring up 2010 at the AT&T Byron Nelson. That's when Jordan Spieth really burst on the radar for a lot of golf fans, and he was using that trusty Scotty Cameron 009 putter that he's had in the bag since he was about 14 or 15. That putter was also part of his magical 2015 season, five wins, two majors, and the FedEx Cup playoff victory. Spieth last week, though, had some downtime, decided to do some putter testing because in recent weeks he's had some alignment issues. He said he really liked how the Scotty Cameron Futura putter from an alignment and sightline standpoint looked and he felt like he was making anything. So the big change is he's going from a traditional blade putter to more of a mallet style putter for this week's AT&T Byron Nelson. He says it's a permanent switch but we're going to see how this plays out in the near future, Lisa. Uh, very interesting, George. Thank you very much. It's <laughs> I say interesting because Jordan told Jimmy Fallon last year that old Scotty that he's had in the bag for like seven, eight, nine years. He slept with it. You know, I mean, this is a guy who's won major titles. He's confident with it. And now to go to a completely different look, how big of a deal is this? Well, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think it's a big deal because it's Jordan Spieth and because he has become known amongst players in the locker room is pretty much the best putter on the PGA Tour. Statistically, that doesn't necessarily hold up this year, but over the last few years, he has been the guy to beat on the greens. And 
If you just look at the statistics, one of the things that Jordan was working on in the offseason when we talked to each other at the Hero World Challenge was that he wanted to improve his ball striking. As you look from this graphic, his ball striking has improved in terms of the strokes gained approach statistic. Now the only time that he was in the top 10 in strokes gained putting, he went on to win the golf tournament. So he's looking to combine those two statistics in, in an effort to try and reproduce the, the winning feeling. He tends to heat up at this time of year, too. If we look back a year ago where he was in strokes gained putting, he was 38th in strokes gained putting. Right now, he's 39th in strokes gained putting. I think if there's areas to look at from Jordan's perspective and say, well, there's calling for concern, from five feet, he's 160th ranked this year. Interesting, though, from 10 feet, he's 18th. So, note to, I brought a couple of samples here. These are not the exact models, the 009 uh, Scotty Cameron, but it's close. And I'm going to ask you, if you would, just put Put your two fingers out and Absolutely. show people how this one is a toe hang putter that tends to be for a golfer that or putter that likes to take it more arching around their body versus this is similar to the T5W which is a tour only model that Cameron is putting into play right now this Futura from Scotty Cameron see the difference on this one the one that I'm holding is actually a faced balanced putter the way notes you described it before is you could place a drink right on the front of this and this one is hanging low so you, you heard that I'll tell you thank you so you heard Jordan say before that, or George was quoting Jordan before, saying that he was having trouble with his alignment. Look at the way that this aligns. The Futurist uh, models from Scotty Cameron have a very high what they call MOI. And what MOI is is that as the ball comes into contact with the face, it has great stability. That's because of this design. It's because of the extreme heel-toe weighting. There's weighting on the bottom and also these wings that come into play. So if you're going to uh, line up a ball, let me show you this way too because it's a very good shot. If you're going to line up a ball this way, notes it, this is a look that for Jordan, right now even though he's a little bit of a different neck on the one that he's using for Jordan right now it's giving him confidence well yeah and a different look can mean somebody that goes into the tournament or the two or two around the golf with a little bit different attitude a little bit of hope versus a little bit of skepticism can be all the difference for a world-class golfer. We talked about the numbers. I thought it was interesting. From 20 to 25 feet, nobody's better than him. In 2015, he was first. 2016, he was third. Right now, tied for 22nd. So maybe this will help him get back into those Absolutely. ways. Let's take a look at Spieth's group. Uh, going off at 8.50 in the morning, off number 10, Jordan, Brent Snedeker, Matt Kuchar, these guys will have a good time together. There is no doubt about that. Well, world number four, Jason Day, played in the Pro-Am today, but decided to cancel his scheduled news conference after eight worldwide wins in 2015 and 16. Day has now gone a full year without a victory. He won his first PGA Tour title in this event back in 2010 when he was just 22 years old. This will be a fun one to watch. 150 in the afternoon off number one, Sergio J. Day. Patrick Reed, uh, these guys, they're grinders, and they like it. You know Jason Day wants to get back in the winner's circle, and so does Patrick Reed. So uh, they'll be out there grinding and Patrick going after each other. Patrick said he's worked out his equipment issues. There you go. Here's a closer look at how the TPC Four Seasons Las Colinas is playing from the Golf Course Superintendents Association of America. The rough, about two and a half inches deep, and the greens are rolling somewhere between 11 and 12 on the stem. Well, you see how great they are on the course. Coming up, you'll get to see how Sergio Garcia and Jordan Spieth surprised some young golfers off the course. Plus, he's 59 years old and is still leading the PGA Tour champions. Up next, Noda tells us what gives Bernhard Langer the edge to keep winning as he approaches 60. You're watching Golf Central. Golf Central is brought to you by the new Titleist Pro V1 and Pro V1X. Choose the best for your game. Golfadvisor.com best of lists. We didn't make the lists, you did.